What is up, you guys? We are here with Ado and Olivia from the Still City Music Showcase. My name is Deadhand. I'm here with my co-host, Derek. What's up, guys? What's going on, guys? Not much. How's it going? Chilling. Chilling? Chilling. Yeah. Just living life. I'm excited to get into this conversation. Uh, the Still City Music Showcase, the first of its kind. How are you guys feeling about it? So excited. Yeah. This is amazing. I mean, there's so many musicians in Pueblo alone that when we actually get to come together and have a, f a festival, mm -hmm. that's amazing. We're, I'm excited about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's something that's probably been needed to happen for a very long time, given how many talented people do live in our town. Um, and it's, you know, an honor and a privilege to be a part of the first one. Definitely. Yeah, I'm excited to be uh, the first host on the on the official podcast of it. You know, I'm sure you're excited, too. Um, I think before we get into anything, you know, how's everyone's day so far? I know you guys just had newborn babies. So I'm sure it was busy. <laughs> yeah, very busy, but awesome. Yeah, little emergency diaper situation before we got here, <laughs> oh, but we're no. here. We got here just in time. So tell us Isn't about that how it is, though. Yeah. So <laughs> basically, if you haven't had kids yet, you'll find out. But basically, if you have anything planned, just about five minutes before it's time to leave, there's going to be an issue. <laughs> Even so, if you're earlier, like yeah. right on time, I was like, no, change of plan. If you plan for the issue, you've done too much because it's going to so else is going to hop yep. up anyway. So, but it's a blessing, of course. Yeah. It's like an exploding diaper type situation. Mm, we didn't have a blowout this time, but we've we've encountered them before. Sport. I definitely got my brown belt by now. So. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. How old's your baby? Uh, he's three months. Three months. Your baby? My baby is two months and some change. So they're pretty yeah. close. They're very close. Yes. Yeah. I yes. love it. In fact, we ran into each other a few times during the pregnancies and went, how's it going? And both of them were like, <laughs> like we're done here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pregnancy yeah. is no joke. Yeah, agreed. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah. <laughs> so were you like the stereotypical headphones on the stomach? Let the baby listen to like whatever genres you're I thinking of? I was more like singing to the belly than the headphones. Okay. Yeah. 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 I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I had no interest in like even attempting to play music at that time. My belly was giant. Yeah. So I was just like, I can't like comfortably hold a guitar. Not going to happen. It's just not happening. Don't play it yourself. <laughs> I know. Basically. <laughs> I've had that problem before too, but I for mean, a hey. totally different reason. <laughs> what about like... Um, you know, do you want to get the, ch the children involved in music at, at any age or do you want them to do, let them do their own thing? Oh, definitely. I mean, it'd be awesome if he wants to be involved in it, but I'm not going to force him. Yeah, same. I mean, I feel like he has access to like all the instruments and stuff that my wife and I have. You know, if he chooses to just grab them one day, I'm all about it, whatever he wants to do. I'm not sure if this is true about you, but I was like I was raised in a very musical family um, and so it was never pressured. But like you mentioned, the exposure was always a thing. And so I think that that just naturally allowed for me to find my own way in music, which was unique from everyone else in my family. But now it's like I'm a part of the big family band in my own right. So hopefully your kid does get to That's so cool. That, yeah. I mean, it would be just he and I. <laughs> for That's fine. That's where it starts. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, I start really, a band. Yeah, 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 basically. And my wife, she's totally down to do whatever. Like, yeah. here's this bass, learn this. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, you like, it's like the Jackson 5. There yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> the Olivia Five. Selena, that's what we'll, we'll go take with. It. So yeah. I love yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> so um, well, I'll ask you first, tell us a little bit about your band. Oh, man, the Marietta Dolls. It started with just me, and it is now ending practically with just me. Um, Wild. Yeah, I mean, it was a project that I just had in mind, like, I want to say around 12 years ago now. Just something I just started playing around with you know I had no intent of like making it anything I just started writing songs and it just evolved into what the Marietta Dolls became yeah which at one point was um two people and then three people and then four people and then two people again and it was just kind of all over the place yeah um but the vibe still stays the same I love that yeah and what about you if you to sum it up Ugh. right <laughs> so Kyle and I are in Fat Quarter we're also in a band called Just a Feeling that's like an alternative pop rock band okay um, and Kyle and I have influences and ideas that don't necessarily fit that idea as much as, you know, a random act like Fat Quarter could. And so Fat Quarter is kind of our home away from home, um, kind of an escape from the music that we take incredibly seriously with Just a Feeling into kind of a more grooved and laid back fun experience with Fat Quarter. So, yeah. How is that? Uh... How's having the, the, the children like changed how you guys make music or perform music? Or I actually just started playing again. I mean, I took mm -hmm. a two-year break um, from playing. The last time I played was obviously two years ago back in April, the same time frame actually when we're yeah. going to do the showcase. So it's kind of 
it's kind of cool to be reintroduced to it. Um, but during all of it, like I hadn't really wanted to play until recently where I just kind of got my inspiration back. Yeah. And I think like for me, it's, it's easy when you have people to collaborate that are understanding and, and can facilitate um, the things you have to get done. Like with Justin Feeling, there's never any doubt that we're going to keep recording and keep playing shows. And then with Fat Quarter, you know, Kyle and I always make time uh, to get together and just jam out. I think like having the kid has only made me um, spend the time I do spend away from him in like a much more uh, focused manner so that I make the most of my time. It's, it's a lot less lollygagging now, I'd say. So it's been a good thing for me. How old are you guys? I'm 32. I'm 31. What I advice think. would you guys give to like a younger <laughs> version of yourselves, you know, like before the children or before, you know, anything got love, serious? I love that question. I tell me not to worry so much about what other people think and just to do and play what I want to do and play. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm straight up going to quote on that for yeah. sure. Like, that's absolutely what, what I would tell myself. Just I, do it. Just have fun. What I love about this event and what I think is important is... In Pueblo, it always, as a young man, it always felt like you would never be big until you were big outside of Pueblo. Mm -hmm. And then your community would rally around you. Now, this sort of event makes me feel like we can be a community that uplifts our artists. And, you know, it starts there with our city and ends somewhere else rather than it being the opposite. So I'm excited for this sort of opportunity for the future um, artists of this city. Definitely. I like that. I do too. I think, I think it's really important to kind of toot our own horn, mm -hmm. you know, like we have so much talent here Yeah, and yeah, something and like this is really important. It's not to get too far down the rabbit hole. This is a podcast, so we can go on for days on conspiracy theories, but I'm here for it. It, uh, Nik <laughs> Nikolai Tesla, you know, he, he went where he went and did his thing because of ley lines. Um, and there are actually a ton of ley lines that intersect here in Pueblo, Colorado. So there's some kinetic energy. I'm so glad you confirmed yeah. that because I was telling people that and I was yeah. like, I feel like someone told me and I can't find it. Our house is right on a ley line. Mm -hmm. What's that a ley line? Interesting. Cool. There are geometric patterns, the way some cities and places interact with each other that uh, are said to like exist on a plane that provides like a higher consciousness. It's like a higher frequency. It's yeah. like third eye stuff. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. It's yeah. a vibrational pool that you can and feel. For a long time, people have talked about Pueblo being a creative hub as a result of those geometric ley lines. Yeah. It's yeah. Crazy stuff. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Are you, does that make you guys it seemed like more spiritual in any way. Do you feel like, I mean, I don't even know what that is a uh, ley line, honestly, till today. I mean, I think everybody in their own right is spiritual, um, whether it's religious or just energetic, Yeah. you know, and a ley line just confirms what you feel from the planet itself. Yeah. You know, you just feel the vibrations, you feel the frequencies. Like, yeah, I think it's like, what saying. Not to, not to get too love is blind on you, but it's like a, a vibe. Do it. <laughs> it's like a vibe, you know, like you yeah. wake up in the morning and you smell the air and there's something to it that you're like, I'm going to make something today. Mm -hmm. There's an energy about where you're standing that kind of spurs you on, makes you maybe think instead of instead of just going for a run, I'm going to go for a run and then write a poem. Like, who does yeah. that? Mm -hmm. People These in Pueblo surges do. of energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you know, and... Uh, Spirituality, I think, is uh, it's something that people in, in tougher situations tend to lean on. And Pueblo is the city of you know tough situations, we're gritty, and so I can I can see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Pueblo has a reputation of being like gritty and like quote unquote ghetto, but you know Pueblo really is just a beautiful little town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and um, just like any other place you go, it, it's what you make of it. Exactly. And I think the best thing about the group of people that are in this show, what they signify and show is that you don't have to leave this town to be what you want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a misconception, I think, here that uh, what, who, I, who I really am and who I want to be is in California or Denver. Truth of the matter is you are who you are no matter where you end up. So. And most of the time you end up coming back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's inevitable. I think yeah. like most people leave Pueblo thinking they're going to find something bigger, but they just come back home. Pueblo is just home. And yeah. it's not to say there's not plenty to experience outside of the city, but we have something special here. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So what is your recommendation for like the most underrated spot in Pueblo? 
either it can be food, it can be experience, oh, um, man, there's views. So many places. There's so many little hidden gems. There really are. Um, don't say Coors Tavern. No, younger me, younger <laughs> no. me would say this is this is showing my age because I need to do. I don't even know if kids like longboard anymore at all, but oh, like man. longboarding it's down triggering. Corona Street by yes. the river, the mural is a little different than it used to be. Um, so now it's kind of like a better bike ride and walk because they have the bridge and everything. Uh, but back in the day, just you hop on the longboard and go down Corona towards Union, and it gets a little sketchy. It's pretty fast, but. At that is night. a steep hill. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it is a part of like the nucleus of my memories from college mm. doing that little ride there. So I love that. No That's Cara. Awesome. What's that? No Cara. No, no, not at the time. But I mean, <laughs> That's why we're going down that hill. Yeah, no, I mean, we would walk that hill to go to the bars um, on Union back in the day. And fat, funny enough, we, I used to live up the road in a house that we called the Trap House because the doors didn't lock. Um, basically anybody could come and go as they pleased and uh, we all spent our paychecks on beer and now here I am 31 years old and I have a kid and I put beer on my grocery pickup order <laughs> love that love that I love that what's your underrated recommendation um I think just downtown Pueblo in general like most of my memories my growing up is based around downtown Pueblo you know, I can think of being 16 and 17, like in my first car, you know, wanting to get out of the house. Mm -hmm. So I'd go down to the Daily Grind when it was called the Daily Grind. <laughs> now it's the Sacred Bean. Mm -hmm. um, but I would just go down there, you know, and read a book, listen to music. And yeah, that was, you know, it just like the basis of my memories, you know, are being in the, the parking lot on D Street and playing Frisbee with my friends, you yeah. know. <laughs> I also kind of think like, how many of our paths probably crossed because we were all doing that same thing Dude, but all never time, even realized guaranteed. it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Well, I was like doing, I don't know if you guys have heard of the street beat, mm -hmm. uh, but that was like the Pueblo Arts Alliance, what's it called, the Arts Alliance now. Um, they had like a foundation set up to pay performers like us to play on the streets. I remember that. Uh, and so absolutely, I, I'm sure you I'm guys have walked that. by me and gone, ah. <laughs> Not even, who is this? I, I, now looking at it like i do remember you bro yeah. <laughs> it's coming back to me that's, now. that's yeah. wild that's, all about that's that. a good segue into a question i have yeah. so what is your worst show experience oh, that God. you've ever had <laughs> oh man there was this uh one time the marietta dolls were brand new as like a full group mm -hmm. um and we were playing at this place i think it was the oriental theater in close to Denver. Mm -hmm. um, we were with this like booking agency called Afton and they booked us for this show, but the band was still like brand new. Um, one of my friends was on the keyboard and it was just, it was just not good. Like she was off <laughs> doing her own thing and they have it recorded and it was, oh, it was so, it was so crazy. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of your, your guys' fault. Was yeah. On the venue and the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> it was wild. Yeah, that's, that's I'm, I'm sitting here trying to decide whether or not I want to like put my foot in my mouth and say something about a venue, but I'll just You don't have to names. name them. Yeah, I won't yeah. name names. Um, but just a feeling, um, we were actually called Beyond Bridges before that as a reggae act. And one of our first gigs up in Denver, uh, we stepped into the building and they promptly informed us that we weren't going to get paid, we weren't going to get meals, and we weren't going to have drink tickets. And the building was freezing, mm. like freezing cold. It just so happened that our keyboard and bassist kind of uh, had a bender the last night before because he was at a bachelor party. So we got a keyboard bassist who's in bad shape, <laughs> we'll put it that way. Over. And we're all up there just oh. absolutely freezing our butts off. Luckily, I hit some Creed and everybody laughed for a little bit. So <laughs> we're good. Wow. I mean, please tell me you guys are doing Creed. Oh, yes. Like no, you I, can't bring up Creed without. You can't do it. <laughs> I mean, all right, here we go. Ready? Well, I just heard. That's too good. The news today. Oh, my goodness. Ready, They're going to be requesting it. this. <laughs> like, hey, I heard you can sing Creed. Yeah, you know that Filipino guy who <laughs> took over the job for whatever. Like, you know, we need a whole covers album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Creed covers. 100%. Creed covers will we dress like Creed from the office? Yes, please. Now we're talking. <laughs> I'm in. I'm so down. You were talking about how the band was new. Um, how many members in the band did you have at that time when that At that time, happened? it was, including myself, there were four of us. How has it changed you, you know, and, you know, also um, yourself? Now it's like over the years, it's just kind of like dwindled down, just people coming and going. And it just kind of happens that way sometimes. Um, 
But now it's just today. most of them. You know, there is a couple that, uh, you know, they just didn't end that well. Like they had their own idea of what they wanted to do, which is totally fine. Like, I get it. I'm not going to beg anyone to be a part of something if they're not in it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's kind of like, if you want to be in this, let's do it together. If not, I understand. Go your go your own way. It's totally cool. Um, but now it's back down to just me. Like I said, I took a break for a couple of years. And a friend of mine, Soren, is playing this show with me. Soren's awesome. Yeah, I love her. She's so cool. <laughs> but yeah, she's that. playing the show uh, with me. And she's also new into playing this with me. So this is kind of like mm-hmm. brand new. We're kind of just winging it together. And I think that's part of what makes the Marriott at Alls fun. It's just like it turned into like an improv kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know, which is it's just a lot of fun to play something so simple and so meaningful to me. But for other people to want to be a part of it as well. How do you preserve the sound, like the Marietta doll sound, even though there is that evolution of, of people? Well, the lyric stylings and like, I guess just the style of what my voice can just naturally do mm-hmm. is kind of what keeps it that way. Um, there have been a few different bassists come in and put their own flair on it, mm-hmm. but it still stays the same, which is kind of cool. It's kind of just like you don't have to play what's on the album. Yeah. You know, hear the chords, have fun with it. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what... Um, my biggest thing with making making the group is I'll never claim the Marietta Dolls to be my band. Mm-hmm. It is the Marietta Dolls in general, even if it's just me, mm-hmm. which in my mind leaves it more open for people when they do come in to have their own flair. It's not just mine. This is what I need it to be. It's like, if you're going to join this with me, you need to put your staple on it, mm-hmm. you know, make it part of you too. And something really cool comes out of collaboration. Okay. Exactly. Every time. Always. Always. And that like sparks new inspiration and more ideas and stuff yeah. that I may not have thought about. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. it's cool. It just opens a whole new door. Yeah. Oh. I think for most bands, there's kind of like a threshold when you go from like being friends who do this together and really enjoy it to like, hey, let's try to play some places. Let's try to record some things. Like, let's take this a little bit seriously. And I think that's probably the moment where things kind of get a little hairy because you are friends and some people Mm -hmm. might not have got into it for that reason and so there are some comings and goings but mostly the friendship thing is has maintained um in terms of like the sound evolution i think it's really cool that you've held on to your sound because i think i mean i love that you say it's a collaboration but i think the marietta dolls are pretty um pretty much you Mm -hmm. yeah and like that uh that speaks through the music, no matter who comes and goes. I mean, ev- the mark of every great band is that no member is out or in when they right. don't want to be. And so I think that's really cool. And I think that's what's true maybe a- about our my group, but what's maybe a little bit different for us is Kyle, Tony, and I, Tony from Just a Feeling and Kyle from Fat Quarter, we just stick with each other and come up with a new name. <laughs> <laughs> that's but that's, that's a chance awesome, to reinvent though. yourselves yeah, yeah. Well, it's really cool we we our style is that we just really like writing songs um mm-hmm. and when you write a song it doesn't have to be like how you want it it can be whatever the song is I, we like to let songs take us where they'll go we'll have like a weird four on the floor song that makes no sense for an alternative rock band. And we're like, well, what do we do with this? So now that's where fat quarter comes into play. It's like, there's that groove that we made. That's super fun, but doesn't mm. quite fit our style in this group. Now we have this Avenue. So that's kind of what we've gotten. Definitely. Um, I've seen you guys perform a few times. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, you guys do a really good job. Thank you. Um, what about, um, other bands that are going to be form- performing at the festival? Are you guys looking forward to seeing any of them? Well, Absolutely. You, you want to drop some names? Yeah, the Rage Tones. Uh, we've <laughs> yes. had the Rage Tones. The Rage Tones are yes. a blast. We've That'd played with awesome. the Rage Tones quite a bit. Um, they've they've opened for Just a Feeling in in a couple of our shows, um, and Chris is just an excellent guy all around. Um, I love everybody in that group, so I'm really excited. I always have a good time. They have such a cool and eclectic gathering of instruments. Mm-hmm. I think like having a, a, a sax player in a that's so cool it's a tenor sax too so it just has a nice it's so cool a nice feeling to it saxophone Mm. like psa we need more sax we We need more sax i played saxophone for like seven years bring it back (laughs) bring it back (laughs) bring it back i don't even know where i'd put it at this point in time 
I also played bassoon. Like, where do you, what do you do with that? <laughs> How do you lose a bassoon? <laughs> That's great. Love it. You're Anybody really else you can it. name drop you're excited to see? Oh, man, there's so many. And there's just the tons the, it's of, like... It's just a huge lineup. I'm yeah. So excited. I'm excited. Just trying to even think. Morgan? Um, yeah, Morgan's, Morgan's for awesome. sure. Ashlyn. Yep. Um, gosh, I'm just drawing a blank. But We're going to try. Well, maybe this is a spoiler, but we're going to try and get Morgan to play a, a song with us in our awesome. Fat Quarter set as well. So That'd be awesome. See, that's that's really cool. Yeah. That'd be a super cool collaboration. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hardly yeah. Nevers. Yeah. yeah they're going to be. They're so awesome, too. I mean, Chayla, uh, the lead singer in uh, the Hardly Nevers. She's another been, um, almost newborn parent. Yeah, yeah. Another one. Yeah. She was. Uh, she had her baby shortly after. Is after that I did. Fun? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. They, they were really close together. Yeah, they yeah. were like a week apart. That's so wild. cool. But she, um, she's been in the music scene for ages. And her brother. Yeah, they're just incredible musicians. Mm -hmm. Like whatever they do is it's, just amazing. It's always so tasteful. <laughs> I'm like, oh. It's like, how do you do that? Yeah, yes. like they don't even have to try. It's just so good. <laughs> it's like I don't drink tea, but if I were, I'd do it while I would be listening to That's that it. kind of music. Yeah. Love that. Nice Earl Grey. <laughs> nice foggy morning. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love it. All right. A future endeavors with music and where can the people follow you? Honestly, I don't think I have any future endeavors of just to enjoy what I'm doing. Love um, that. With the Marietta Dolls, at least. At some point, I do want to try uh, a new project. I want to, but it just kind of depends on who I get to be in this project with. I think the next project that I actually want to start, like I want to be, I want it to be a group. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to just be this collective group. I'm kind of tired of being the front all the time mm -hmm. honestly i love being backups and i love being on the side that's like my favorite place to be when it comes to music um but as far as marietta dolls goes we have an album on spotify apple music uh youtube pretty much anywhere you can stream music you can find the marietta dolls album called no good bad intentions nice. love it yeah check that out because it's very good um thank you yes mm. So for Fat Quarter, we're working on an EP. It will be our debut EP. It's going to be kind of like a laid back vibes sort of thing. So be on the lookout for that in the next year. Uh, just a feeling we have some more singles coming out here this year. Uh, one called For You that I wrote for my wife and my son, which is going to be pretty sweet. Aww. And uh, if you want to go find the music we have out now, <laughs> head on over to Apple Music. You can see Just a Feeling there. I got a song with Morgan Cox actually on there as well under Ado. It's called Find a Way. Um, and you can follow us on just about any social media platform you can think of them. We got a website too, so head over. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much. Of course, thank we you. are thank so you excited guys. for the showcase. We will be there. Heck yeah. Yes. So. <laughs> Looking forward to it. I'll be wearing a blazer. <laughs> ah, looking good. Yeah. Blazer and saxophone? I hope so. All right. Blazer, Sounds blazer. great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Right, guys, you know what it is. It's Derek. It's Dead Hand. Thanks for watching. Peace. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to go to steelcityshowcase.com and get your tickets now. No, it's still kitty. <laughs> still, shit. still city music ah, showcase. Shit. Ah, okay. Okay. All right.